In this video, I show you how to make a region selection in world edit and how to use the slash slash pause and slash slash cell commands. Here are some timestamps to help you find your place. Starting with selecting a region, go into your inventory and get yourself a wooden axe. As you can see, my build is a little bit of an odd shape and that is on purpose, so if we go to the first corner, I'm making sure that it's not going to miss out any of the build and then I'm going to left click on that corner. Now I go over to the opposite corner and this corner is going to be in the air to make sure that the box goes around the entire build. So I'm going to have to pile up a little bit and then I can right click it with my axe this time to set the second corner. Here I've used Lightmatica to show you the region that I have selected, but don't expect to be able to see this in your own world edit, this is a separate mod that I'm using to show you what I've selected. And it's as simple as that, once you've made your selection, there's a bunch of other world edit commands that you can do, and I've got a separate video showing you a bunch of world edit essential commands that you need to know that I will leave in the end cards. Next up is the slash slash cell command. This command will let you select in different ways other than just using a cuboid. There are seven different selection types, which are cuboid, extend, polygon, ellipsoid, sphere, cylinder, and convex. By default, this will be set to cuboid. However, if you have been using the others to change it back to cuboid, you simply type slash slash cell cuboid. For all of these commands, you can also add a dash D on the end, which will set this as your default selection tool in any world. Let's start with extend. Simply type slash slash cell extend. This will now only allow you to extend the selection region in a cuboid shape. With the extend tool, I left click to start a new selection and I right click to expand an existing selection. For example, watch what happens when I select these four points with the cuboid tool. I'm going to left click on the first point and then right click on each of the others. And I end up with something looking like this. Now, with the extend tool, watch what happens. That is because this is what happens with my selection with the cuboid tool in contrast to what happens to my selection with the extend tool. The extend tool only lets me extend the selection each time and will not shrink it. So, if I select the first point and the second point, I'm selecting that line. So when I select the third point, I'm extending the selection out to meet that point. And then, when I select the fourth point, I'm extending the selection up to meet that point. Next up is sphere. Simply type slash slash cell sphere. Left click to set the center of the sphere and then right click to set the distance from the center to that point as the radius. For example, this sphere has a radius of 5, which does not include the center block. Because left clicking sets the center of the sphere, that means that the sphere selection will always have a one block center. You don't have to click in a straight line directly from the center, it is easier to, but you could just click in random places and in chat it will tell you the length of the radius that that sphere will have. But the radius is always defined as the distance from the center block to the edge of the sphere not on a diagonal and not including the center block. For those of you with really complex builds, I will now tell you how to calculate what the length of the radius will be when you're using that diagonal, but for those of you who don't need to know it, you can skip ahead now. As I said earlier, to calculate the length of the radius, it's simply the length from the edge of the sphere to the center of the sphere without including the center block. Now, that's quite easy on a horizontal because the length of a block is counted as one in game. However, on a diagonal, this diagonal length is actually counted as 1.5. So if we have a diagonal like this, the length of the radius is actually going to be the number of blocks, 1, 2, 3, times by 1.5. Now, if we have a three block diagonal, 3 times 1.5 is actually 4.5, but you can't have half a block in these spheres, so it's going to round up and you're going to get a sphere with a 5 block radius. Now this only works on true diagonals and it gets a lot more complex if you're going for different diagonals, like for example if you're doing a 2 block diagonal like this, then this formula is not going to work and I can't help you, that is way too complex. Next up is the cylinder selector. Simply type slash slash cell 
Sill. Left click to set the center of the cylinder. Next, you get to choose the length of the radius of either the X or the Z direction. If you only set the radius length for X or Z, it will assume that the other is zero and your selection will only be a single line, like this. The radius does not need to be the same in both the X and Z directions. If you have them different lengths, the cylinder will just stretch like this. If, instead of choosing two points on a straight line from the center in each direction, you decide to choose one point on a diagonal from the center, that point will decide the radius for both of the directions. For example, this point is seven blocks in the Z direction, but only two blocks in the X direction, meaning the X radius will be two and the Z radius will be seven. If you want your cylinder selection to be taller, all you need to do is increase the height of one of the points. The cylinder selection will always start at the lowest point and will always end at the highest point. Next up is the 2D polygon selector. Simply type slash slash cell poly. This selector will join the dots between as many points as you want to add. If one of your points is higher or lower than the others, this will increase the height of the entire selection. At the bottom of your selection will always be the lowest point, and the top of your selection will always be the highest, regardless of what order they're added in. This tool is very useful for scenarios like this. For example, I've got this tiny house here, but it's surrounded by a sea of diorite. But using the Polygon Selector tool, I can very cleanly and easily extract this house from the diorite without losing any of the details of the house, just like so. Left click to start a new selection and right click to add points to your current selection. Next up is the ellipsoid selector. Simply type slash slash cell ellipsoid. This selector functions very similarly to the cylinder selector. You get to choose the radius of a sphere in all three directions, X, Z and Y. If you only set the length of the radius in one or two directions, it will assume that the length of the radius in the other directions is zero. So if you only choose two, you'll end up with a cylinder, and if you only choose one, you'll end up with a line. Left click to set the center of the sphere, and then you can right click up to three times to set the radius length in the X, Z, and Y directions. If you choose to select a point on a diagonal from the center, then the radius of each direction is always set on the distance from the center in that direction that the point is. For example, this point is 3 away from the centre in the X direction, 5 away from the centre in the Z direction, and 6 away from the centre in the Y direction. Finally is the Convex Selector. This selector will also join the dots between points that you choose, like the Poly Selector does. However, this will also do it in a 3D space. Each point that you add will be a corner to the 3D shape of the selector. Left click to begin a new selection and right click to add corners to your shape. This selector is the hardest to understand, so let's go through some examples. I've got my points laid out here so that if I were to select all of them, my selection will be a cube. However, if I was to start my selection again, but this time miss out two points, my selector may look like a square from this side, but on this side, these two points are missed out, so it's only joining the dots between this point and this point, which makes this flat wall here. Next, let's move on to the slash slash pause command. Typing this command by itself, slash slash pause, will set both positions to your location. Typing slash slash pause one will set position one to your location. This is the same as left clicking with the world edit axe. Typing slash slash pause two will set location two to your position. Now, if you're not using the cuboid selector and are instead using, for example, the polygon selector, this will set another point on your polygon, whereas pause one will set the start of your polygon. This is the same as right clicking with the world edit axe. 
And by your location, I mean the block that your feet are in. Going back to slash slash pause by itself, you can then type numbers after it. One number, then a comma, then another number, then a comma, then another number. And then a space, and you can type another set of numbers to set position one and position two. And the numbers are written in the order your X position, then a comma, then your Y position, then a comma, then your Z position. If you're using a selector that can select multiple points like the polygon selector, then you can type in as many different number sets as you like. However, if you're typing in multiple sets of numbers and you're still using the cuboid selector, it will select the position 1 as the first set of numbers you type and position 2 as the last set of numbers that you type. If you found this video helpful, please smash your world edit axe into the like button and stroke it along the subscribe button to set them as position 1 and 2. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye! There's no point being able to select a region without knowing commands to use in that region. So click this video here and it will tell you all of the essential world edit commands that you have to know if you're gonna start using this for building.